The Royal Marines crossing the northern flank of West Falkland to Port Stanley were led by their own special forces unit, the Mountain and Arctic Warfare Cadre. These Marines were trained to fight and survive in the most difficult terrain and weather conditions anywhere in the world. On May 31st, one of the Cadre's four-man patrols spotted an Argentine position held by 17 of their elite Special Forces commandos at a desolate, and isolated farmhouse called Top Malo. The Royal Marines alerted their commander, Captain Rod Boswell, who decided to mount a raid with all the men he had available. The 19 Marines were split into two teams with the fire group on one hill overlooking Top Malo House. Its task was to provide support fire as the 12-man assault group charged the buildings from an adjacent hill. The Marines were not impressed by their opponent's combat readiness. Their professionalism left a, a little bit to be desired, and they shouldn't have been in an isolated farmhouse, most certainly not inside it anyway. And if they were, they should have had sentries well clear of the building to cover the approaches. And we gave a few indications of our presence. We'd stampeded some sheep by accident, obviously. We'd come across some sheep. We'd come in a helicopter, and a real professional bunch would have made, made up for that. But they made up for their lack of professionalism by their courage. I mean, they, they certainly did not lack courage. The battle was to begin with the fire group hitting the house with anti-tank rockets. Boswell had intended the assault group to advance in two mutually supporting sections. But things didn't go exactly as planned. And I will always remember the, the charge. I mean, my memories of running in and thinking, they've all disobeyed me to a man, fantastic. All his men had leapt to their feet and charged with fixed bayonets. The Argentines were caught completely unaware. These men hadn't, the first warning they had of our presence was a, a building exploding all around them. They all got out of the house, those that could, and every man that got out of that house fought. They all got out with their weapons, and they fought with their weapons until they couldn't fight any longer. The Argentine survivors of the initial bombardment rushed out of the building and ran to a stream. There they took up positions along its bank. The ammunition inside Top Malo House exploded and the building caught fire. The smoke masked the advance of the Marines as they charged towards the Argentines. The Marines fired their grenade launchers over the building and on to the Argentine commandos hidden along the stream bank. Two in the assault groups were severely injured by gunshot wounds in the intense firefight. Meanwhile, the British fire group moved forward under cover of the burning building. and then emerged from behind the burning building and attacked the Argentines from the flank. A grenade killed the Argentine commander and the remainder surrendered. Five Argentines were dead and 12 captured, seven of those injured. Only three British were wounded. In the 28-minute battle, the Argentine Special Forces troops had been decisively beaten. After tending to the wounded, there was one final task, to check out the battlefield. The building by that time had completely fallen down. There was one other little task. There was one, we'd, we'd checked the peak building. We'd obviously fairly successfully taken out the house and, and the sheep building. And there was one other building, the outhouse, that had to be cleared. And the nearest man to it was Corporal McGregor. So I shouted down to McGregor, and clear the, clear the outhouse. And Captain Boswell shouted to me to clear that toilet. And I think what he expected me to do was to go over and knock at the door and say, excuse me, would you like to come out and join us? We've had a little fight here, but... But uh, as it was, I turned around and I thought, there's no way I'm going over there, just in case one of them happened to be in there. So I, I let off the whole magazine in the toilet, and the methane that was in the little bucket in these outside toilets exploded and blew the toilet completely up. 
And all the guys who were around here thought, well, that's, that's just a lovely culmination to the whole thing. We all cheered as this toilet disappeared in a big blue flame. <laughs> they all thought, well, that's, that's a culmination of the whole thing. And uh, <clears throat> that was the end of Top Mallow, really, when the toilet disappeared. <laughs>